Chapter 6 is about solutions. One of the things we said about the characteristics of solutions is that you can make solutions at different concentrations. For example, maybe you make a 1% solution or a 3% solution or a 30% solution. So the concentration of your solution, it's the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given quantity of solvent. And there's three different ways we're going to learn to express concentration units. The first one is weight by volume percent. And the units for weight by volume percent will be grams per milliliters. So you want to remember the units for weight by volume percent. So weight by volume percent is the weight of my solute divided by the volume of the solution. And then I multiply by 100 to make it a percent. So for example, if I have a 0.9% saline solution that would be used for intravenous or IV feeding, that means that I have 0.9 grams of my solute, which is sodium chloride, is what's being dissolved in the water. The total volume of my solution is 100 mLs. And then to make it a percent, I would multiply by 100. So you could see 100 divided by 100 cancel out, and I would have a 0 0.9% solution. Here's an example where you'll be asked to calculate the weight by volume percent of a solution. A blood sample taken from a patient is analyzed for glucose. 5 milliliters of blood contains 0.00812 grams of glucose. What is the weight by volume percent of glucose in the blood? So in this problem, the first thing you're going to need to do is determine what the solute is and what the solution, because weight by volume means the weight of the solute divided by the volume of the solution. So in this case, the solute is what's being dissolved in the solution. So our solute must be the glucose. So the weight of our solute is 0.00812 grams. So that's the weight of our solute. So we can identify glucose as the solute. And then the solution is the blood. So the solution is the combination of the solute plus the solvent. So the total amount of glucose and whatever else might be in there in blood is our solution. So the volume of our solution in this example is 5 mLs. So then we just need to remember our formula that it's weight of solute divided by volume of solution times 100 to make a percent, and we can plug in the information given to us. In this example, the units for weight by volume need to be grams per milliliter. So our solute is in grams and our solution is in mill milliliters. So the units are correct already. So we have 0 0.00812 grams of glucose divided by five milliliters of blood. And then to make it a percent, we need to multiply that by 100. So if we do our math, I come up with 0 0.162%. And this is, for this patient, we're checking their glucose level. Normal range for glucose is 0 0.08 to 0.10%. So you may be asked, is this patient has a high glucose level? What might cause that? So if we have a high level in sugar in our blood, one thing you might think of is diabetes. Could be an indication of having a high glucose level in our blood. Another reason that may cause a high level is when you do a blood test, you're always asked to not eat before you go. If you do eat before your blood test, it's going to cause your sugar levels to go up. So that could be another reason why this person has a high glucose level. Weight by volume percent is a fraction. 
and because it's a fraction, we can use it as a conversion factor. So percent means whatever the number is divided by 100. So weight by volume percent means it's the grams of solute divided by the milliliters of solution. So again, our 0.9% weight by volume solution has 0.9 grams of solute and 100 milliliters of solution. So we can use that information to do conversions. For example, if I give you a problem that I give you the grams of the solute and I ask for milliliters of solution, I can use my weight by volume percent to do that conversion or vice versa. If I gave you milliliters of solution, we could convert that to grams of solvent using the weight by volume percent. So this is just showing us how we could write this as a conversion factor. So if we had, for example, a 0.9% solution, we could just say that 0.9 grams of solute per 100 ml of solution. Or because these are equal to each other, we could flip our fraction upside down and say it's 0.9 grams of solute is equivalent to 100 ml of solution. How many grams of sodium chloride are needed to prepare 250 milliliters of a 3.6% weight by volume solution? So we always want to start by writing down what we're given and making a plan to figure out what we're trying to find. So we're given two pieces of information in this problem. We're given 250 ml of solution and we're also given 3.6% which is our grams of solute divided by our milliliters of solution. So in the previous slide, what I said is if we are given the percent, we can use that as our conversion factor. So whenever I have a fraction, that's going to be my conversion factor. And what we're trying to find in this problem is the grams of salt, the sodium chloride. So if we have a salt water solution, then the solute is what's being dissolved. That's our sodium chloride. And then we're given the concentration of our solution in grams per milliliters. And because it's a percent, how we can write that is 3.6 grams of sodium chloride divided by 100 ml of solution. So I'm writing in this format instead of including the percent. Now I can use my weight by volume percent, the 3.6 percent, to convert from volume of solution to grams of solute. So let's set up our problem. We're going to start with 250 milliliters of solution and we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor which is the weight by volume percent so we have 3.6 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in water to get a total volume of our solution of 100 milliliters so then we can see our milliliters of solution cancel and we have 250 times 3.6 divided by 100 and that gives us 9.0 grams of salt. And then accounting for significant figures, I have 250 and 3.6, so the one with the smallest amount, 3.6, has two sig figs. My final answer should have two sig figs, which is why I added the zero after the nine. The second way we can express the concentration of a solution is percent by volume. And this is volume of solute divided by the volume of solution times 100 to make it the percent. For example, if I have rubbing alcohol that is a 70% volume divided by volume solution, I'm just going to say that it is. 70 milliliters of my solute in this case is the alcohol 
and my total volume of my solution is 100 ml. And then to make it a percent, I multiply by 100, so the hundreds cancel, the milliliters cancel, and I end up with a 70% solution of alcohol with its volume divided by volume. Now the units for this just need to match. So you need to make sure the volume of the solute units are the same as the volume for the solution. So in this example, we had milliliters divided by milliliters. You could have liters divided by liters or gallons divided by gallons. You just need to make sure your units match so that they'll cancel out to give you your percent. What is the percent by volume of hydrogen peroxide for a 250 milliliter bottle of solution containing eight milliliters of hydrogen peroxide? So in the question, we need to figure out what is our solute and our solvent. So the one in the smaller amount is gonna be the solute. So we have eight milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, and then we're given the volume of our total solution. So hydrogen peroxide dissolved with water. The formula for calculating the volume by volume percent is volume of solute divided by volume of solution, multiply 100. We just need to make sure our units match. So our milliliters of solute and our milliliters of solution, same units, so we're good there. So we can say we have eight milliliters of hydrogen peroxide divided by 250 milliliters of solution. We multiply it by 100 to make the percent, and I come up with a 3% solution, which is the concentration of hydrogen peroxide if you have some in your medicine cabinet at home. Notice the sig figs here for eight, that only has one sig fig, so my final answer can only have one sig fig. Volume by volume percent is a fraction, so we can use that as a conversion factor. Percent means your number is divided by 100, so a 5% solution is 5 ml of solute divided by 100 ml of solution. So we can use this to do conversions if we're given a percent to convert, for example, your milliliters of solute to your milliliters of solution. Again, the units have to match, so we could also say that maybe that's liters being converted to liters. So how we can convert from milliliters of solute to milliliters of solution is using our volume by volume percent. And again, that's volume of solute divided by the volume of the solution. Or if we're given the milliliters of solution, we can convert to milliliters of solute using our volume by volume percent. So for example, if I have a 5% solution, we could say that's 5 ml of solute divided by 100 ml of solution. And because those are equal, we can flip them over and say 100 ml of solution divided by 5 ml of solute um, is equivalent to each other. So we have two different conversion factors we can use to convert from milliliters of solute to milliliters of solution. How many milliliters of honey are in 375 milliliters of a 5% volume by volume honey solution. So we can identify what's our solute and what's our solution. So honey is what's being dissolved, so that's our solute. And then we're given the percent of our solution and the volume of our solution. Okay, so we're given two pieces of information in this question. So we wanna figure out which one we're gonna start with. So we said we can use the volume by volume percent as a conversion factor. So we're not gonna use that to start our problem. We're gonna start with the 375 milliliters. Okay, so we'll start with our given as 375 milliliters of solution. What we're trying to find is the milliliters of solute, which is, is our honey. In order to go from milliliters of solution to milliliters of solute, we can use our volume by volume percent. So we can go ahead and set up our problem. We have 375 milliliters of solution. Now my conversion factor the 5% means we have five milliliters of honey 
in 100 milliliters of total solution. So we can use that to do the conversion. We have milliliters of solution at the top, so milliliters of solution needs to be at the bottom. So I put 100 milliliters of solution at the bottom, and at the top we have 5 milliliters of honey. So we can see our milliliters of solution will cancel. So it's just 375 times 5 divided by 100, and that gives me 18.75 milliliters of honey. My sig figs in this problem is I have 1, 2, 3. So my final answer needs to have 3 sig figs, so I can reduce that to 18.8 milliliters of honey.